This is our just-in-time lecture over the most often missed questions from Section 7.9, Gases and Chemical Reactions. This particular question, we were at the end of identifying the quantities with their respective variables, and we were down to number of moles. Number of moles is going to require us to take the grams of our starting compound, use the molar mass, and the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation, two moles of potassium chlorate will yield three moles of oxygen to get the correct answer, 0 0.01163 moles. Of course, if we wanted to really shortcut the entire system, we could have also said, well, that's units of pressure, that's a unit of temperature, that's a unit of mass, not moles, and that's our old pal R. For this particular question, I had it all set up for you, and I wanted you to take the numbers I had plugged in right here to come up with volume is equal to 0 0.248 liters. If you didn't get something close to that, go back and look at how you plug the numbers into your calculator, because either the numbers were really close to this and I counted them correct, or the numbers were quite a bit off from the correct answer. All right, so this one requires us to go back and think about some of our Gen Chem um, 1 semester A topics where we're balancing a chemical equation. And with this one, we see that hydrogen comes in packets of two on the reactant side, but packets of three on the product side. So the best way to tackle that is to go ahead and come up with that common factor to say that Two times three gives us, if we just write this out, two times three gives us six hydrogens on the product side. Two times three gives us six hydrogens on the reactant side. Two times one gives us two nitrogens. And if we put a one in front of N2, it gives us two nitrogens on the reactant side. So the correct answer depended on answering one, three, two, and I saw some two, six, fours, which are incorrect because you need the lowest ratio of whole numbers to balance a chemical equation. All right, in this question, what happens to the total number of atoms in the balanced chemical equation? Because we did just balance this, coming up with two nitrogens plus three times two is six hydrogens, so we have eight atoms if we're doing this one atom at a time, eight moles of atoms on one side, and then two nitrogens plus two times three gives us six hydrogen. Again, eight atoms on the product side. So the whole reason why a balanced chemical equation works is because of the law of conservation of mass. And this just says that matter is neither created nor destroyed. And the whole idea of balancing it that is that we get the same number of atoms when going from reactants to products. If we didn't have this to the same number of atoms on the reactant and product sides, then our equation wouldn't be balanced. On this particular question, it's kind of a, a play on the last question, but this time we're looking at molecules. So N2, nitrogen is a molecule. H2 is a molecule, and NH3, ammonia, is a molecule. So these are all molecules. All right, so in the balanced chemical equation for the synthesis of ammonia gas from nitrogen and hydrogen, there are blank moles of nitrogen. All right, so we've got this understood one in front here. So we have one mole of nitrogen molecules, and we have three moles of hydrogen, so if we add those coefficients up, we see that we have a total of four moles of molecules on the reactant side. So we have four moles of molecules. In contrast, there are only two moles of ammonia. And the idea here is that while we are conserving the number of atoms, the number of moles of gas phase reactants and products is different. So this question is the follow-up to the last question. 
the total number of molecules is going from four to two. So the best way to characterize this is to say that there are more reactant molecules than product molecules. Finishing up that nitrogen plus hydrogen gives us ammonia example, we see that we go from four moles of gas on the reactant side to two moles of gas on the product side. And I was hoping that everyone would catch on that when you have an increase in N and temperature is constant and volume is constant, that means that pressure will increase. You're putting more stuff in a constant volume. So the greatest amount of pressure would be from the greatest number of moles of gas. All right, the last most often missed question was this one. Which statement cannot be made using Guy-Lussac's law? Guy-Lussac's law works because we can relate moles of one gas phase substance to moles of another gas phase substance. So everything here that I've got surrounded in blue, these are all in the gas phase. And we can go from saying moles of a substance to liters of a substance. Where that fails is when we go to something that is a solid. So which statement cannot be made would be the one that incorporates the solid. We would not have one liter of solid ammonium carbonate. We could, however, have liters of gases. If you still have questions on this particular play pause it video, please post those on Piazza or drop in during my office hours Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2 to 3.15 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time.